morning. My, I, that was a fantastic set of uh, presentations there. I think there's some amazing stories being told there, actually. Um, I, just the sort of stuff that we we're wanting to hear, actually. Uh, my name's George Finlater. I'm a head of a new team within Historic Scotland, within a new directorate, even, actually. Very small team, but very perfectly formed and growing as yet, called a, a, part, a partnerships, a, a development and partnership. Sorry, it's so new I don't even know the name actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, development and partnership, uh, and I head up a team within that that deals with community engagement, international strategy, and partnerships. So, um, and I'd just like to say thank you very much for um, allowing me to chat today about some of the work of the team that we're carrying out at the moment. Uh, this is uh, some of the stuff that we regularly show when we're, we're saying this is what the historic environment is doing. And I think what we saw in Port Soy, in East Club Ride, and uh, East Club, uh, in Oban rather, and in, the, um, in Dunbar, we saw some of these things that's contributing towards this sort of work. It's, it's stimulating the economy, it's, it's recording our heritage, it's promoting and celebrating our heritage. And this is fantastic stuff. And today you'll see some of my colleagues talk more about how you carry out archaeological projects, how you can, you can, you, you can work them out. You'll see when you, we, with the two Simons, uh, it's unfortunate, uh, when you go around about the sort of knowledge and expertise that they'll bring to, to this sort of uh, work. But in doing this, it's like, this is the core that we're doing. This is the absolutely essential stuff that we do. And we have to really uh, push that on and engage with it. But I have to say, at the same time, we do have another um, a, a task from government and a very key task. And David, my colleague David Mitchell touched on that uh, at the beginning in terms of dealing with the big government targets and big plans. And it's unfortunately, it's, it's this stuff. Uh, this is the thing in, a, in, in Scotland where premature mortality is uh, under 75, um, a, where a people are are dying from a variety of effects, most of which are tied around cultural and other factors as well, a poor diet, etc. as well. And it's, it's properly called the Scottish effect. Um, and it's not a name that uh, people in NHS like to use, but you may have seen it in, in the papers being used uh, in that way. Um, and it's a big key indicator for government. Um, and makes quite grim reading at times. Even though the, the bar is going down, you can see a wee kink there and it's still slightly going back up. And within that, you can see this is a representation that's been made of the sort of tube lines in Glasgow, where you see the, the effects that, you know, uh, in, in one bit of Glasgow, males are, uh, uh, the life expectancy is 75, and yet that goes down to 61 in other parts of the world. So these are some really key challenges, and all bits of government, including heritage, is tasked with how do we deal, deal with this? And that's a, a key factor of the work that um, our teams, along with my colleagues, um, are trying to engage with as well. And in fact, some of the talks earlier on, and notably the Dunbar one, was touching on these big issues, actually. And, um, but I think our team and what we want to do is to show how community engagement, how partnerships can really make, make a big play into that. There's, there's a better feelings of self-worth, well-being, all the things that you know and see, but we really have to promote that. I think heritage can be a key factor in, in looking at this. It's not all about diet and hospital. In fact, in many ways, I now go to meetings with the NHS and others, and it's all about prevention. It's going back out into the communities and looking there because we can't deal with, we all know the pressures, we see it in the press of uh, the, the impacts on resources and money that the NHS is doing. And this is the stuff that we have to try and get right in our places and our communities, because it's, it, it really matters to us at the moment. So one of the big drivers within what we're doing and what government sees is under this thing, the Community Empowerment Act. And there's been lots of community things before, but this is one of the big ones um, that's focusing our attention is leading to teams like ours being formed and similar teams you probably come across, colleagues in SNH and other government bodies that, that are tasked to carry out a, a range of, of outcomes under this Community Empowerment Scotland Act. And it really comes from a sense that traditional forms of government really weren't addressing some of the issues. They weren't working with you with you properly. You saw that, if you ever know things called the Christie Commission, there's a big report out on how, pub, how public sector uh, services weren't really working out. They weren't delivering to people on the ground. Um, and for all the great work on, within Scotland, there was still pockets. Whoops, something's gone off there. Pockets of um, inequality as well. 
But the act itself is pushing us uh, to, to work with communities better. It is structuring the, the way that we want to do. And it's not just communities in, in certain places. It's communities of interest and identities across the board, all definitions that you'll all be familiar with. But whatever that means for us, that's quite a lot of challenges of how we respond to all these uh, 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 tasks, but at the same time deliver the um, looking after 336 of the things that David Mitchell calls stuff along with the 70,000 listed buildings and giving the advice on that. So that's quite a, a, big, a big task. So I want to go through just some of what we're, we're, we're doing with that. This is some of the things that's caught under the um, Community Empowerment Act. Now, many bits of it are outside it, like football clubs. That's not really to do with us. But there's some bits in there, like community planning, asset transfer, participation requests. These are things that we are now having to deal with and, and set up. A major part of what I'm doing is sort of setting up the sort of, uh, procedures, the guidance, all that boring stuff internally to try and deal with this. Asset transfer, for one, we've got policy out and uh, how we've got a register of, of assets and if communities can come and see what assets are. You'll know that yourselves and I think some of the, the talks were referring to that that before as well. So we need to develop the policies. We're also engaging with other bits of government as well in how best to give advice to communities and others about this. But the main one I wanted to touch on at the moment is community planning, because that's one of our big focus at the moment. How, how do we resource, how do we feed into the community plans? Traditionally, if you see all the brown things to one side, they're the stuff that we traditionally would have talked to. We, the local plans, the development plans, and you may have fed into that when you've had public consultations with planners in your areas as well. Uh, and there was all sorts of strategies. There's a huge sense of plans underneath it now. But to one side now, there is the community plans. And that's a, a top level. That's 32 local authorities where we're working with all sorts of other public uh, bodies, the police, etc., all around there to try and see how we can coordinate and better uh, deliver services on the ground. But that comes with resourcing. That comes with lots of issues around how, how, how we input into that as well. So what we're doing at the moment is just looking at the way that we can um, put our resources and target it towards areas that we think um, will benefit uh, uh, the, the communities that they live in and also at the same time sort of uh, uh, work out against our investments again. And then coming down to local outcome plans and locality plans is how do we give sets of advice, how do we give guidance, how do we start the conversations like here today where you're telling us we want to really engage with this but we don't know how or we need bits of information to say how can we um, I promote the historic environment? How can we get that embedded into local outcome plans? Because there'll be many other competing issues in there um, with planning as well, many other issues. And yet we've seen today through those three talks just how much heritage can deliver and how much uh, an appreciation of historic environment, how much getting out, volunteering, trills, skills, training, all that sort of stuff can really make, make a big impact. And we need, we need to help you Make sure that you're making the best plays when you're, you're, you're talking about your locality plans, when you're going and, and forming them as well. But that's a big task for us, and that will form a huge part of our work over the next um, couple of years when the next round of uh, community plans uh, come through. And I just want to focus on, you see a bit of the bra at the bottom, based upon a sound understanding of place, and that will come up quite a lot as well. As, uh, we want to ensure that we've got the, the information that you can take, that you to say this place is important for these sets of reasons as well. So we don't want to get in the way of that, we want to help this. And some of the, the things I'll come up with in a minute will start to talk about that. But it's recognising um, a, a very broad understanding of place. Um, and you'll see why traditionally we've, we've approached it in what I would call a very academic way. And you'll see some of the areas we'll try and work through that. Uh, this is the, uh, a photo of my colleague Polly Megson. I think she sticks out in this one. I don't need to introduce it there. She's uh, Miss Wiss, Mr. Swinney uh, at Stanley Mills, which is, if you don't know, one of our properties in care up in Persia. It's an amazing set of 19th century mills, so please go and visit. But what Pauline and our colleagues was doing was actually something that we really want to promote. And my colleague David Mitchell at the beginning talked about um, a, how, how to do more with the stuff. Um, and we saw it here with the hub. Uh, we want it to become an area where communities come, learn, discuss, share. 
And equally as well, we're starting to explore and push how we can see through our 336 properties that there is there just a hub in which we can start to work with communities. It's, it's not the only way we're doing it, but we feel through our properties in K there's, a, there's an untapped resource there. Um, in some of our areas, we're going to be doing lots of investment there. And at the time, do we then, how then can we work with the communities in that area and listen to them when we're deploying the resources? You know, what, let's say, just say the use of a, 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 a uh, our colleagues, when they're down there, they can also talk to you about other things as well. So there's that going on. But the specific instance here with the Men's Shed Association, which if you don't know, is a very fine association actually. Uh, and obviously it's in the title, Sheds, which is very essential to life uh, and living, I would say anyway. Came out from Australia. Um, and it's to get men to, to come out and um, participate in, in events. Um, it is tied around a very serious thing, which is around mental health, um, middle life depression, all that sort of stuff. But we were trying, you know, it's difficult to find venues as well uh, for this sort of stuff that's cost effective. So our colleagues worked to see how they could get a place within the property and care that could work with them. And there was all sorts of legal stuff, et cetera, that goes on. But we're able to say, look, we're able to utilize part of our property and care for this, for this sort of a, a endeavor. And this is the sort of thing we really want to see what we can explore with many other of our properties in Kia. And there's a lot of discussions on at the moment as well. But it's a, it's a, as I say, it's, it's starting to look at our properties in Kia as hubs and as ways that we can talk and interact with communities uh, much more. Not to be the, the men from the ministry sort of with the red line and all the rest of it. Uh, far more than the, the Ministry of Tidy Works. Uh, this is another area, um, and this is one sort of a bit closer to my heart since um, it's something I was involved with. I'm sort of the, so in the middle chatting away. And this was um, a, a bit of a stushy, to be honest, for us because uh, uh, we, uh, we didn't listen correctly to people when they told us what was important about our local area. Um, and we interpreted things in a certain way. But we reflected and we came back and we listened to people a lot more and we said, yes, this thing is important. And this thing, which is behind the barbed wire because there's some very um, large cattle around in there, it's called the Tinker's Heart. And it was placed at the intersection of a road or in a very bonny place overlooking Loch Fine, uh, near a place called Cairn Dow. So please go along to it and have a look in there. And it was a place where gypsy travelers came, uh, celebrated marriages, births as well. Over, and it's over, we think it's over 100 years that they came. And the, the heart of the Travellers Trust came to us and said, we think this is very important. Please, would you designate it? Um, and we said no initially. Uh, and then the stushy occurred. So then we reflected, we listened, and we came back out and we talked to communities. But not just communities in the place, um, but communities across Scotland. In fact, actually, internationally, um, tra travelers and others came out of, uh, said, sent us stuff all over the world to say this is really important um, for a lot of reasons. And there were reasons that weren't written down. This is the other thing. With Many of this was passed on orally. It was difficult. And for us, as people who work off lists and off all this sort of stuff, this was new stuff. That, I'm not sure I like this at all, actually. Um, but we worked through it and actually one aspect of this that really resonated was the, the help and the facilitation of community groups on the ground. You see on the right hand side there, it's a little sign put up by the Here We Are a development group, which is in Loch Fine. And they very kindly hosted a, some a, sessions with us when we were talking to Gypsy Travelers and others about the importance of this. And they, fed, they were able to act as um, intermediaries with us on how um, uh, who to talk to, as well as the Ochendrain Museum as well. Uh, it, that, that was really important. And from that, it's not just that this was scheduled as one of, as the first monument to the, the travelling community in Scotland. So we, you know, in a major way, we recognised uh, a part of Scotland's heritage that hadn't been accepted before. But for us, it was something to reflect on, to bring back, to say, we didn't quite get that right, so how can we build that in again? 
And now you can see we have things, I don't know if you, you've ever fed it, what's your heritage, which is a major consultation. We're going to say, how are we looking at, we designate and take decisions about our heritage. But we recognize that in doing that, we need to be far more aware of the variety and the diversity of heritage that's out there. Not just the national monuments where it's, uh, this is a famous architect built this. It's got to be far more than that. And in fact, actually, Liz Robson today will be talking a little bit more about social value. So it's a much broader way that we have to look at that. And that's really important how we go forward uh, and looking at what's important in our communities. This is the uh, so last little bit of, of sort of many bits of our work that we're doing. And it resonates for me coming from Stornoway. And it's not really something we are directly involved in, but it's part of our work to fund other bodies and to create other institutional connections. Uh, if any of you have gone on the boat into Sorney, we'll see up on the side near the Beasts of Holm a memorial to uh, many servicemen that died in a, a, a disaster that happened on New Year's Day in 1919 uh, and it's just coming up for the centenary now. And what it is that we've, we've input into Arts and Business Scotland for the Cultural and Business Fund Scotland and it's a fantastic thing that, that tries to get local businesses involved because money is coming up in all talks that we're talking about that's always an issue and this is one way of trying to maximize that but it's really I want to just use this as an example to say we're working at another level with more national partners to see how can we um, support you how can we support things that then support you on the ground and uh, behind that there's the an amazing uh, great website that will give you lots of information about how you can talk to businesses how you can structure your approach as well so this is something that we want to really work on is identifying big national partners out there that we we can hook up with and they're not our natural ones in the heritage we know those sectors we work with those guys coming back to uh, the big um, challenge that we've got those health challenges as well being chances we need to look a lot further than that in trying to sort of deal with problems uh, on the on the ground and this is one way that we have of doing it and we're going to start to to look at that a lot more and in so <laughs> trying to develop a, a information for you that we we you can tell us what you think is important in the area and we can come back and say how can we scale i think we use scalability replicability and that's a, a major thing and in, we want to use this a lot in how we're, we're uh, working in, in developing these sorts of strategic relationships. So how are we going to go about this at the moment? Well, I'm putting this up to say this isn't the way to do it. Uh, not at all, actually. Uh, this is the old way. Um, very comfortable. You could sit in an office, um, sit there, put some papers around, and then occasionally go out and visit a site and meet some people and then go back to the office. And that was very nice. Um, I'm not sure that's the, what we always did, but however, that way, as they call it the blueprint way, is quite um, persistent and it's something we, we, we're going to have to watch actually because it's very easy to come back into the we know best approach and this is how we do it. And that's why um, events today, when you're talking to us and say no, this, this and this, that's really important and we need to, to develop those frameworks to develop much better ways of talking to communities and local issues uh, around. This is what we want to get to, and this is what we're starting to work to. So it's providing that framework, that community, that pace when we can all come together and listen and be sort of equal partners in the rest of it. Uh, forget the non-expert inside, it's just my jargon, because this is the sort of stuff I, I used to use when I worked uh, abroad in, in the Middle East, and it was just a way that we had of, of, of working. Um, I'm going to leave you with a, a wee quote, and it's, it's something that resonates for me from having worked in Syria with communities there. One who lacks cannot give, and it's from an, an architect that works in Homs, which is a city that's been very devastated by the war. And it talks about her battle to overcome challenges and her work with communities to rebuild her, her society. But really, I think it resonates for me in the challenges that we have to do and the opportunities in the way that we have to work is that we don't have the resources, we don't have the information, we don't have the, the support, we cannot give back, we cannot actually work uh, to deliver what we know communities want, what we know are some of the things wrong as well. So that's, that's really kind of what's driving us at the moment and w I just want to finish with the fact that community engagement now is at the 
corporate heart of Historic Environment Scotland. It's now front and centre there. It's occupying a very central core with it. And as we go forward, I really, we really want to hear much more from you, your ideas, your thoughts. We're, we're here and we're listening and we want to learn because we, we really want to sort of um, a, a maximise and push the value of heritage in, I think, delivering some of uh, Scotland's key issues. Thank you.